about command line compilation. As a prerequisite, please make sure your Java C version and your Java version are both above 15. If not, please consult your TA. Alright, let's go ahead and get started. You'll see in this folder I have a file called hello world.java. This is the canonical hello world program. As you'll see, it simply prints out hello world. We'd like to execute this program via the command line. In order to do so, we have to remember that Java is a compiled language. That means the first step of executing Java code is to compile our source code that's human understandable into bytecode that is understandable by a machine. Then we use a special program to execute that bytecode, thereby executing the program. So let's try the first step of this process. Let's turn our, our human readable uh, hello world.java into machine code. So we use the Java C program to do this. It takes uh, our source code and converts it into bytecode stored in a dot class file. Now let's take a look at the bytecode. You'll see that it's really ugly. And again, that is uh, understandable because it's not meant to be understood by humans. It's meant to be understood by a machine. So the particular program that executes bytecode is called Java. So if we call Java on the dot class file, hello world dot class, note that we actually have to omit the, the dot class when we're calling Java. If we call Java on this uh, hello world, you'll see that it actually executes the program. It understood the machine code in the dot class file and executed the program. So that's basically it for command line compilation. That's all you really need to know. But I want to talk about one more thing, uh, which are uh, command line arguments. Command line arguments are a way to pass in information from the user on the command line into a program. An example of a command line argument is in the Java C program. You'll see in the Java C program, we pass in as an argument the file, the name of the file that we want to compile. In other words, Java C takes in a command line argument, a file name, and compiles that file. We can get our programs to take in command line arguments as well. So I've demonstrated this from a file called arguments.java. So let's take a look at arguments.java. You'll notice that the command line arguments get stored in this string array args. You might have seen this string array args before uh, when writing out public static void main string array args. Well, what it really means is the string array of command line arguments. So when we specify command line arguments on the command line, they get stored in this string array. And once they get stored in the string array, you can use the arg string array like you use any other array. So for example, I have code here that iterates to args.length, prints out um, each of the uh, elements in the array. It says, you know, args0 is, and it shows you what arg0 is. Args1 is, and it shows you what args1 is. And then it says finished. So let's try this out. So uh, first, we have to compile arguments.java into a class file. And you'll see our class file ends up here. Cool, now let's run arguments. And let's pass in command line arguments. You can pass these in by simply appending them to the end of the Java command. So we'll pass in three command line arguments, one, two, and three. So you remember what our program does. It prints out arg0 is, and then what arg0 is, et cetera, et cetera. So that's telling us that the first command line argument is one, the second command line argument is two, and the third command line argument is three. Wow, that's nice. We can pass in more command line arguments as well. We can pass in five, six, and they'll end up here. We can even pass in no command line arguments. And in other words, the string array args functions exactly as a regular array that takes in and it will contain whatever we pass in uh, after the name of the class file uh, as a command line argument. Cool. There's only one thing. The one more thing that we need to take into account. You'll notice that spaces are the delimiter between command line arguments. In other words, if I put a space between two words here, they get treated as two different arguments. What if we want one single argument to contain uh, spaces? Well, we can do this with quotes. So if I want 
two and three to be treated as a single argument with a, uh, in the spaces inside the single argument, I can use quotes. Put two and three in quotes, and now we'll see that args1, the second argument, contains both two and three. All right, now we know everything we need to know to get started on capers. So let's go to a lab six directory. So in capers, we'll also be compiling and, er, and executing and testing our code via command line compilation instead of through IntelliJ as we're used to. Let's see this in action. Let's go into the capers directory. This contains our starter code. The difference here uh, from before is that in the previous directory, the, the files argument.java and hello world.java were independent of each other. They were separate programs. In capers, main.java calls capers repository.java, which uses dog.java and utils.java. They all belong to the same final program. So how do we tell uh, Java C that all of these files are in the same program? Well, we simply specify all of them on the command line. When we specify all of them on the command line, Java C knows all of these files belong into one final program. So after I run the Java C command, it generates .class files for each of the Java files uh, we, we specified on the command line. And we'll be able to run the, uh, those, uh, the program through the file with the main method. We'll see that main.java it has a main method right here, public static void main string array args. That's the one we're going to use to enter the program through. So now that we've compiled our program, we can try to run Java main. Uh-oh, we'll see that we got a cl no class def found error. We specified the incorrect name main, but it wanted capers slash main. This is an oddity with packages in Java. Because main.java is in a package called capers, in order to execute it from the command line, we need to exit the package capers. You see I was just in capers. I exited by going to the parent directory lab six. And now in order to run main.java, I need to call it by its full name, capers.main. And finally, the program runs. It's printing out an error message to us that we must have at least one argument. Why is that? Well, if we go to capers slash main.java and we look at it, you'll see that we didn't pass any command line arguments to main. We just said java main. So our args.length will be zero. And capers throws an error. It says if args.length is zero, you're going to error with this error message, which we got. So you'll see that we actually have to provide a command line argument. Let's try providing the command line argument story. Uh-oh, we got another error. Invalid number of arguments for story. Let's look at why this is. So we'll see that once we provide a single command line argument, arg0 is the command line argument. We passed in story, so we end up in the case story. So what happens, the first line validates the number of args in the story command, and it makes sure that there's at least two. Well, we only specified one argument. We only specified story. So if we provide another argument, uh, in, this argument should be in quotes because it's a story and we want to have spaces there. Then the program will be happy. You'll see we didn't throw any error messages. Now, right now the program isn't doing anything. Uh, it's not printing anything out. Your job in this lab is to make it print out something and store this story somewhere. I'll let you read the lab spec for that. Now, I just want to show you one last thing. We were able to run capers from the command line, but it was a little bit tedious. So we've actually provided uh, a means by which you can do this easily. This is a program called make. So you might notice that there's a make file in, in each of the directories. That helps facilitate the command we're about to run. So if we type make, it looks at the make file, and the make file tells it to uh, compile all of the Java files. So you see it compiled all these files. Now if we go to capers, we'll see everything is still compiled, or well, recompiled into the updated.class files. And then we have an additional 
make program that allows you to test your code. It's called make check. So you'll see this ran some tests. Right now I'm failing all the tests because I still have the starter code. Once you finish the implementation, you will pass all the tests. Finally, there's one more command called make clean that cleans your directories. Uh, let's go to LS Capers. That cleans out the directory. So it got rid of all the the build requirements, like the dot class files and such. That's nice if you want your repository to be in a clean state. So if we make again in the LS Capers, we'll notice that all of our class files are back. In other words, make compiles the uh, the dot Java files and make clean gets rid of all of them. So that's all you need to know about command line compilation and the make program to go ahead and get started with capers. Good luck!